My name is Janine Amick, Executive Director of the Manatee Performing Arts Center, and welcome back to a new segment of Action Through Acting. Action Through Acting is a series of theatrical productions being put on at the Manatee Performing Arts Center centered around social issues combating our community. Today, I have a special guest with me, Ms. Elizabeth Gelman, Executive Director of the Florida Holocaust Museum. Elizabeth, welcome. We want to thank you so much for taking time to come from St. Petersburg to join us in studio today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the museum. Well, thank you, Janine. I'm so thrilled to be here and uh, given the opportunity to talk about the museum and what we do. Uh, the Florida Holocaust Museum, um, we're coming up to our 24th anniversary in St. Petersburg. We are uh, the Florida Holocaust Museum, so not only do we serve the Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Manatee area, but we are also responsible for uh, uh, assisting schools throughout the state um, meet the educational mandate. Um, Florida is one of the few states that have a Holocaust education mandate, and so we use our resources and our um, teachers and our educators and survivors to help everyone across the state learn about the Holocaust. And we think it's wonderful. It ties in directly with our next up and coming production, mm -hmm. The Diary of Anne Frank, uh, which is required reading here in Manatee County right. for our school system. Mm -hmm. Tell us, are there opportunities for our audience members and readers alike in Manatee County to actually see primary sources at the museum? Oh, absolutely, that is what we do. So we believe in connecting individuals to individuals. There, are, there were an extraordinary number of people who, um, after they had been in the Holocaust, uh, came to Florida to try to rebuild their lives. And so we are so lucky that the museum has been able to um, receive artifacts from some of the survivors of the Holocaust, uh, take testimony, and our permanent exhibition, which is on the museum's first floor, is filled with um, those artifacts and we incorporate testimony throughout um, the journey that people take from life before the war and then life after the war. What an amazing opportunity. Uh, just like the Diary of Anne Frank, where people are engaged as soon as they sit down, or in your instance, a walkable museum, that they're really feeling as though they are there at that instance of when stuff actually happened. We believe so much in the use of primary sources. Um, fiction certainly has its place, and there's something about fiction and in all the arts and really grabbing the, the reader's heart. But the poignancy of these first-person documents, whether they be diaries or letters written to parents who were unable to respond because they mm. had been murdered. Um, there is something about reading the voices of people who, as it was happening, that is extraordinarily poignant. We know from our organization that it's so important to us this season to really educate our community about the importance of these issues, not just historically, right. but they have a relevance today. Right. And we don't want to lose the importance of the issues. How do you, from a perspective of a museum, keep the issue alive, not just historic? Well, I think that there are a number of ways that we do that. Um, with what we do, with all of our visitors. We're hoping that when they leave the museum, after walking through and seeing the history and hearing the stories, and also on our second and third floor, we have um, art and other historical um, exhibitions that come and go, that they change every four to six <clears throat> months. That we hope that when people leave the museum, they recognize that they're in charge in some parts of their own destiny. At a certain point, they're going to be asked, are you going to be a perpetrator? Are you going to be a bystander? Or are you going to speak up and do the right thing when you're called on to do so? Um, so much of what we talk about is the fact that it wasn't one evil man who perpetrated the violence and murder of almost 12 million people six million of them Jews, but it was all the people that some were thrilled to go along, but more of them just looked away. They said, I don't want to get involved, or I'm worried about myself. 
um, we really try to hold up those people who rescued, who went out of their comfort zone, um, who to, uh, some under great fear of death of themselves or their family, took the time to help Jewish people or other people who had been targeted by the Nazi regime and um, find ways either rescuing children or rescuing um, adults or finding safe passage or helping to forge documents. I mean, it, it's really, there are so many extraordinary stories. Um, I, I like to say, and so many people are still alive here in our mm -hmm. community. Um, I came from Chicago three years ago for this job, and I always say that I met more extraordinary people in the first six months I was here than I had in my entire life. Mm. It's wonderful to hear you say all of those things other than just what I would believe people would define the Holocaust about mm -hmm. because as we do bring uh, to the stage the diary of Anne Frank, we really want to showcase that it was also about family values okay. and how you can connect together, um, community support mm -hmm. right. and their hiding, but also understanding the bigger picture and bringing a, being able to bring it down to a young child's ability of understanding that it even ties in today with bullying. Oh, and it goes along with what you were saying, that it's not just who was in charge at the top of that time, but all of those who went along, um, you know, with the breaking of the glass and the taunting, right. um, the, the, just those types of impulsive things that some of those people did in the community just to make other people uh, feel as though as though they were lower class. Right. And we're excited because this is taking place in our Braden and Kiwanis Theater, so mm -hmm. it's our smaller space. Uh -huh. And for those people who may not um, remember the story, I urge people to go out and get a copy of the Diary of Anne Frank, read a copy of it uh, before they come to see the show. But we're hoping that in such an intimate space, they become a part of the small community of people who are actually in the attic mm -hmm. for that long period of time, mm -hmm. um, that they feel um, in a daily basis, uh, in a sense, on you know what really becomes important. Mm -hmm. The opportunities that we have in not only this work, but in some of the other works that we're doing in partnering with organizations such mm -hmm. as yourselves to help get the word out that these series of, you know, topics. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with mental disabilities, mm -hmm. um, blindness, you know, animal safety, mm -hmm. uh, and now talking about, you know, truly bullying, community, uh, religious rights mm -hmm. uh, is so important. How does the museum, not within itself, but tell us about some of the other partnerships that you've had throughout the state to help with this and getting this word out and educating people? Well, I think that I'm going to go back for just a second and say that's really the beauty of the arts and that sometimes um, when there are, when there's a topic like the Holocaust, which is incomprehensible. Um, that it's sometimes it's difficult for people to go in through their head. They can learn the facts, but mm. the facts don't seem to make um, any kind of real um, connection. Connection. Mm. That going through the arts brings it through their heart up. Um, we are the only museum that I am aware of to continuously collect and display contemporary responses to the Holocaust and other genocides because we do deal with other genocides as well. Um, that huge commitment to showing visual art uh, I think is really important and a differentiator of the museum, but I think it helps people really um, reflect on everything that they've heard. And we really look at art as testimony as well. Mm. There are people that can write, there are people that can speak, and then there are people who show their story through these amazing um, visual arts. Uh, I would say we 
have a commitment to that, whether we do that through our visual arts, um, this wonderful partnership we have with you uh, for the Diary of Anne Frank. Um, we are um, also collaborating with the Simple Theater to do a reading of the play Bent, which deals with homosexuals during uh, uh, the Holocaust. Um, we recently collaborated, a wonderful collaboration with the Sarasota Opera to talk about uh, the music that was uh, banned by the Nazis. Mm. Um, I feel like all of these are pathways in. Many people say to me that they are afraid to come into our museum. Mm. And I understand. They're worried that they're going to come in and they're going to see these terrible, brutal images of bodies pile upon each other. The, um, there are some that are just so, you know, guns and uh, uh, the, the ovens, all of that. The people who founded the museum really made it a priority to make this an educational institution. We knew that we wanted to bring children in, and we did not want to give uh, too many graphic mm -hmm. pictures. So there's very little graphic violence um, or images that you're going to see in our permanent collection. Sometimes we do have shows that deal with something more graphic of that nature, and we have a warning that says, you know, be careful, these have mm -hmm. graphic images. Um, but for the most part, we want people to feel, uh, to learn about it without being overwhelmed by the images, because the stories themselves are enough to overwhelm you. Uh, the images, especially out of context, people zip through, they're difficult to take in and make light of. That's amazing because truly, personally for me, I'm one who believes that art needs to evoke emotion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, unaware, you know, by different groups of individuals, that what makes one joyous is going to make one sad, is going to bring up hurts, fears, and frustrations right. of another. Mm -hmm. And action through acting for us for the, the Manatee Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. that was key for us. And that's what we're hoping that in the small space and bringing stories like the Diary of Anne Frank mm -hmm. to an audience that it, emo that it truly evoked, you know, that it truly brings out that overwhel empathy. Yes, mm -hmm. overwhelming emotion, that it makes them stop, think, and that what we hope create better citizens that Correct. are more, more sympathetic Absolutely. to others. Right, and I think that that's really the key, um, not only to what we all do, but for what we are looking at, is that we believe in the rights and responsibilities that we have as citizens in a democracy. And one of them is the fact that we need to speak out when we see injustice happening. And uh, the Diary of Van Frank is such an amazing um, amazing piece because not only are you hearing Anne's voice, but you're understanding, as you said, a community. Here were people that took extraordinary risks mm. to hide, uh, you know, their boss, <laughs> their, you know, and mm -hmm. his family because they believed that it was right. And it's so important that we hear about those stories. Um, when you walk through the museum, you don't hear a lot about Hitler. I mean, he's mentioned when he needs to be, but mostly we talk about the other people. And especially, we focus on people who did do the right thing. Um, there's a wonderful man in our community, Franz Christensen, who was part of the Danish rescue operation, yeah. um, where the citizens um, hid Jewish people in boats, covered them with very smelly fish, <laughs> and, uh, and set them off. And he was nine years old at the time. And his father took him with them so that he could see how you were supposed to behave as a citizen of Denmark towards your other citizens to make sure that they were safe. And I think that those are such important stories that we know that, um, that they're out there. The other thing that's interesting about stories, um, especially about the rescuers, we, um, we have a, a story about the Bielski brothers. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Defiance, which is a fabulous movie with okay. Daniel Craig and Aleve Schreiber. Uh, but they were what my grandfather would call um, 
roughnecks in okay. Belarus. <clears throat> they were farmers. Um, and uh, when the Nazis came in, this family, especially Tuvia Bielski, rescued almost 1,500 people, um, kept them safe in the forest, was the leader of this community in the forest for however long, a year and a half, two years, and afterwards they immigrated to America and he became a taxi cab driver. So he rose to the occasion when he needed to rise to it. And I think sometimes we think that you always have to be Superman. Mm. But you don't. But there will come a time, and I truly believe this, in all of our lives when we are at a crossroads and we have to make that decision. Am I going to be the person that I want to be? Or am I going to look away and pretend that this isn't my responsibility? You know, from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. I was amazed um, because when we did our auditions, mm -hmm. the people who just came out to want to be a part of mm. such, you know, a, a, a work mm -hmm. that, um, but on some of the characters, you know, the not so nice characters, mm -hmm. people, you know, not necessarily, that's not the part they wanted, oh, you know, nice. and, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but we're so fortunate. We actually have one of our very own board members, Jason Lipton. Oh, wow. um, who is Jewish uh -huh. by faith and birth. Mm -hmm. And he is actually playing the part of one of the older gentlemen. Um, his daughter, Eliza, is actually the lead. Oh, wow. um, so the history that's been passed down from their families, mm -hmm. their grandparents and stories, mm -hmm. um, and now they're actually being part of the work, um, I would say has been a little bit more emotional mm -hmm for them. Right. It's truly, it, it's, it's more than history. It, right. It's almost, um, they have a kinship right. to it. Uh, and so, and I believe that all the people who attend are going to be able to connect with that kinship in some way, uh, because it is. There were so many immigrants right. um, before those who knew what was happening, mm -hmm. you know, and didn't want to believe the propaganda. Right. I mean, who did believe the propaganda. Right. Right. Uh, those who stayed and believed it was, you know, going to change. The regime was going to change. People weren't going to allow this right. to happen. Um, how do you see uh, what's going on in our society globally? Um, do you, you know, how does the museum combat that type of thing. Do you have people who come in and say, you know, oh, this is old, and then some people will say, this is still going on? It's so interesting that you talk about that because that's something that both the board and staff are discussing right now. What is our place as a museum as we see Really, you hear the echoes of the Holocaust. Anti-Semitism is on the rise. There's hatred. There's prejudice. There's um, throughout the United States as well as all over the world. Um, certainly there are new genocides that are happening. Um, it's such a difficult, uh, it's difficult to know what we as a regional museum can do. Um, we do deal with other genocides and we have many speakers and um, we actually are bringing in, uh, in a partnership with USF St. Petersburg, um, uh, Mark Weitzman, who is one of the foremost um, authorities on global hatred. So we're trying to find different ways. We're partnering with the U.S. Holocaust Museum. They recently uh, put out a report on the um, genocide of minorities in Iraq. Um, and so we're trying to create um, new um, uh, curriculum based on that primary source document. We. All of us, I think, wrestle. Um, most good people want to do something, and I think it's difficult to know what it is to do. Um, we use our social media um, pretty aggressively to try to let people know what's happening out there. But I, I think the Holocaust is interesting to study because it is such a well-documented plan. Mm. Um, and you can look at what happened not only in um, Western Europe with where Hitler was, um, but also as they moved into Eastern Europe and the mass killings, and you really see those echoes that are happening all over the world. Other regimes, sadly, have taken them as templates and have tried to recreate them, whether with 
uh, anti-Semitism against the Jews or through other populations. Um, I think what's happening um, certainly with the Islamic State is horrifying mm. um, and it is uh, it is we are working on this as well but I think the more materials we can put out there the more educated people are so that they're not just believing um, some quick you know two sentences that they see in the newspaper that they're actually learning the facts about things that they're coming in and and they're trying to develop an empathy which is certainly mm -hmm. what I believe that the theater especially can bring um, an empathy towards those who they might perceive as the other um, to recognize that we are all so similar. We are all at the core just the same. Um, and so I really, again, I commend um, you all for doing, not only working with a Diary of Anne Frank, but for all you're doing to draw attention to the um, issues that we as a society are facing today. Oh, I appreciate that so much. Um, before we really end, I okay. want to give you the opportunity because I'm mesmerized by what's right behind you <laughs> and you. the trunk. And yes. I know it's a small one. Right. This is a very small trunk. We have, we're, they're called teaching trunks. Um, and they are filled to the brim with, this is a whole binder of curriculum. And inside are books and DVDs and um, uh, posters and other kind of teaching materials that um, a teacher could use in their class. Um, and it goes all the way from kindergarten where we work on character development. Okay. Um, in fifth grade we get into the Holocaust and then in high school we work on other uh, genocides as well um, and human rights issues. Um, the big ones are big and we send them free of charge to any educator who wants them that we pay for the shipping um, and inside, especially for the, the seventh grade classes, let's say uh, they're reading Diary of Anne Frank, there would be 30 copies of Anne Frank in there so that the teacher can, you know, do whatever she wants to teach about, she can teach. Um, so we're very proud of them. We, they go all over the state and they really go all, all over the, the country. Um, and uh, as far as we've, we've had people from Japan who've asked and it's just, too expensive to ship to Japan. Uh, we've been turning online to uh, the FHM.org. You can find curriculum online, and we are increasing our um, resources online as quickly as we can because we hear from people all over the world, really, who um, want to use our resources. Um, some we've created with other organizations, Paris Bates, uh, Yahad, and Unum. Um, we have an amazing resource that was um, created by our educator, uh, Ursula Shapinska, that um, documents the mass killings that took place in Eastern Europe. And we also have um, curriculum that deals with our own artifacts and our own testimonies. And so people can find that online or they can give us a call and we can arrange for one of these amazing trunks to come to their classroom. Tell us about admissions to the museum. I want to give you an opportunity to tell okay. our audience that, you know, um, the hours of operation. Sure. We're open every day, 10 to 5. A uh, few holidays, we're off. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, Christmas, that sort of thing. Um, but to check our website, um, our group rates are incredibly reasonable, um, and our student rates are reasonable. Um, and we have a number of dates also that we are open free to the public. One will be coming up very soon. It is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and that will be open free to the public. I believe it's January 27th, but please check your calendar so that I'm not misspeaking. But uh, we'll be open a couple of, we believe in access. We want people to come in. That, that's wonderful. Talking about access, uh, the Diary of Anne Frank uh, does open this month in January, mm -hmm. so check the Manatee Performing Arts Center website for tickets. Uh, we do also do group sales. We have tickets as low as $12 for students uh, and teachers. We too want to make sure that we're making accessible mm -hmm. um, the arts right. and the arts in a big way. Uh, we're running short on time, so I want to thank you so much, thank Elizabeth, you. for coming. Um, do you have any final comments for our audience? I would just like to say, because I've heard it so much, Please don't be afraid to walk through our doors. I think what people will find is an amazing experience that will enrich them and their sense of history and their connection to history. 
Well, again, I want to say thank you so much. We're looking forward to the partnership, being able to provide information to our audiences thank you on that. a daily basis about okay. the importance of going and seeing, um, and also being able to provide, like you said behind you, trunks for right. educators here in our community right. to really get tangible stuff that the kids can see, touch, mm -hmm. and feel mm -hmm. um, and learn from. Uh, I want to send a very special thank you uh, to those who have been purchasing tickets and supporting Action Through Acting. Uh, we've been overwhelmed uh, with the support of our community and coming out and engaging yourselves in live entertainment. But uh, these segments that we have been filming wouldn't be possible without the generous and amazing support of METV, their production staff and crew, a personal thank you from me as well as our board and our staff. We hope you'll tune in next time for another segment of Action Through Acting. My name's Janine Amick, and I'm the Executive Director at the Manatee Performing Arts Center, and I hope to see you at one of our next up-and-coming productions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.